And welcome to the talk with Tariro. Today on the program, we are looking at uh, the issue of uh, gender based violence. We know with the advent of COVID 19, we've read in newspapers, all forms of media, that uh, cases of gender based violence have increased because of the amount of time that we are getting to spend with our loved ones who are supposed to be our loved ones, and they end up being perpetrators of uh, gender based violence, getting used to us. In the end, they can actually beat you, they can uh, assault you, they can do all sorts. So today on the program to uh, discuss this particular issue, we have invited um, Sasa Project. When it comes to issues of uh, gender-based violence, in 2019, we had uh, 24,000 uh, survivors uh, that year. And um, Sasa has just been briefing me as well to say, during just this COVID uh, period from... Uh, April, they have uh, cases of 6,084 survivors with their call center accounting for 2,811. Worrying figures indeed. And um, on the program to help us discuss that particular issue is uh, Diana Sisi Penzi. She's a program officer counseling with um, Sasa Project. Uh, Diana, we welcome you to the talk. Thank you, Tariro. Yes, we know that um, <coughs> one of your issues that you talk about as a pillar is the issue of responses yes. when we are talking about uh, gender-based violence. Yes. Um, maybe start off by unpacking gender-based violence, what exactly are, are, are you experiencing, and then zero in on the response aspect. Thank you, Tariro. Okay, when we talk about gender-based violence, it's violence that is perpetrated against someone because of their gender, whether they are male or whether they are female. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, uh, what gender-based violence is. Mm -hmm. And from the statistics and from the studies that have been done all over the world and also in Zimbabwe in particular, you find that gender-based violence is mostly perpetrated against women and mm -hmm. girls. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the global figures, we find that one in uh, four women have suffered gender-based violence. Even uh, in marriage, you find that uh, a, a girl who has been married their first sexual experience mm. involved gender-based violence. Because in our custom or in our culture, sometimes people don't believe that a woman can say no to sex. Mm -hmm. So you find that most women are violated yes. sexually, but it goes unreported because culturally they expect it to be so. Mm -hmm. So gender-based violence is actually a big phenomenon in our world and where patriarchy is the principal, you know, uh, sort of what, what people believe in. Yeah. Patriarchy has taken over mm -hmm. and women are sort of regarded as, you know, uh, inferior. Mm -hmm. And uh, women are often regarded as, you know, secondary citizens. Yeah. So you find that men will dominate and uh, women will always be at the background mm -hmm. and anything can happen to our women. Mm -hmm. So you find women and girls, they are the ones who mostly suffer gender-based violence. Notwithstanding, there are a few men also who are reporting gender-based violence and boys as well who are reporting gender-based violence. But you find that the majority of those who are uh, reporting gender-based violence are women. Mm -hmm. mm. And when we are looking at um, the response aspect, what are we talking about now? When we are now talking about the response uh, aspect, Tariro, it's what happens when somebody has uh, suffered gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. That's how uh, we talk about response. And that's where Musasa comes in. We have many pillars that we work with, but our response pillar is one of those where we give direct services mm -hmm. to people or somebody who has suffered gender-based violence. How then do we respond to this woman or to this girl or to this man who has come seeking our services because they've suffered gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. We give psychosocial support. That's how we respond. And mostly people come to us through walk-ins or they can come to us through the telephone. We have a Musasa helpline, which is very useful, especially during this uh, COVID period where the, the number that uh, you have been, you have just uh, alluded to, the 2,811 mm -hmm clients who have come to us, they've actually reached us 
uh, through the telephone line. And that's how we've been responding to them. Mm -hmm. So they come in as walk-in and uh, some they, they, they are referred as partners, the police, the health department, the social welfare, they also refer, mm -hmm. and also the other CSOs, yeah. they also refer clients to us, mm -hmm. and then we respond to them according to their needs. And as you know, to Tariro, when somebody has suffered gender-based violence, they are so vulnerable. Yes. Most of them have, have been stripped of their confidence, yes. their self-esteem, mm -hmm. they are so traumatized, they don't know what to do. And as Musasa, that's where we come in. Our, our client-centered approach. We use the client-centered approach to say the client is the, I mean, everything comes to the, the client is the sender. Mm -hmm. Whatever response we are going to give yes. is going to center mostly on the client that we don't do any further harm. Mm -hmm. And also, that we are going to do everything that we do is going to benefit the client. Mm -hmm. We use that, that rule of beneficence mm -hmm. where the client must benefit. So their security maybe is compromised. Their health is compromised. Maybe they have nowhere to go yeah. because of the physical violence mm -hmm. and they are afraid to go back home. So that's where all the, uh, the issue of response comes in. How do we respond yeah. to somebody who has suffered gender-based violence? And we are guided by our values mm -hmm. at Musasa mm -hmm. of integrity, respect, confidentiality, mm -hmm. because what they like is respect. Yeah. You know, when somebody is uh, violated, mm -hmm. either sexually or physically or emotionally, yes. their self-respect has, has been stripped mm -hmm. and they are not really sure what to do next. So we try to build them up when they come to Msasa mm -hmm. to empower them, yes. not only for the present moment while we are giving psychosocial support, but we empower them so that even when they leave us to go back into the community, mm -hmm. they know what to do and they can be able to live in the community and be able to fulfill their potentials in the community. Mm -hmm. So that's all the package that we give as a response to a client that has suffered gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. Well, that's uh, the response being unpegged. When we come back after the break, we are going to go into detail to then say, when I have an issue of security, when I'm scared even to go home, what do I do? That's why I'm being beaten. So if there is that response, how do I get assisted? We'll hear more from Sasa Project. So in, join us after the break. Welcome back. We continue with our discussion where today we are looking at gender-based violence responses. Mainly we want to assist when you are abused at home. You've been beaten, you've been assaulted, anything, any form of abuse that you have faced. Where can you go? Often we become restless. But today we have a um, Musasa project which is um, saying to us you can actually get help so i want to find out from you when i've come to to you yes. and you're talking about counseling yes somehow we often say ah for us blacks counseling does it really work mm. does it what what exactly happens with counseling thank you tariro when somebody comes for counseling you are saying uh, counseling is a, a form of an, an empowerment yes. it's a talk therapy you have said that uh, people often say counseling doesn't help, mm. especially in blacks. And I've often heard people saying, uh, ah, I have counseled her. Mm. She came to me exactly. and I counseled mm. her. And when they've actually not counseled the person, what they've actually done is to give advice, advice. their own advice, mm -hmm. which is disempowering to the client. Yeah. Okay. But when we are talking about counseling, mm -hmm. you are talking about an empowerment, a talk therapy that is empowering to the client. When the client comes to me, mm -hmm. they know what they want, but at the moment they've been violated. Mm -hmm. Their resources have been exhausted and they are not sure which way to take. Exactly. So in counseling, you empower that, mm -hmm. that client to make an informed choice 
about their lives mm -hmm. so that they can live their lives more meaningfully. Yes. If we are going to give them advice, then they are going to use your advice. They are, they are not going to use their own resources mm -hmm. to solve their own issues. So that's a disempowering. So we aim to empower the client through counseling. We, when we, in, during the talk therapy, we talk about options. Mm -hmm. We talk about possibilities. And then at the end, the client now will sort of refocus among all the issues mm. that have been presented, yes. the options presented, then they can make their informed choice mm -hmm. of what course they want to take in life. Mm -hmm. yeah. For those maybe, let's say, who can't even come to you and you are saying you give them options, what, what are these options that uh, you would give to me when I've, I've been ab ab abused, when okay. I've been violated? Okay. When you come to us, the first uh, question that we worry about is your security. Mm. Are you secure? Yeah because you have suffered uh, you know, violence, mm. are you secure where you are? Then we find out, we explore the options about your security, mm -hmm. whether you are secure. If you are not secure, then we, we refer you to, we have a shelter, we have shelter services mm -hmm. where we can refer you, we can keep you for some time while you are solving your issues or you are pursuing legal mm. or court issues. And then you, we, we, we give you temporary shelter where we can shelter you until you are ready to make an informed decision about where you want to go mm -hmm. and how you want your life to go. And during this uh, shelter stay, you are also empowered through counseling. There's ongoing counseling in the shelters so that you'll be able to make a choice about what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And also there are legal choices. Mm -hmm. We have a resident lawyer on the premises at our one-stop center mm -hmm. at Msasa head office yes. where you can explore your legal, you, you know, chances. What are your, your legal expectations? Mm -hmm. What are the legal issues that are involved in the abuse that you are, you know, having? Or whether you want to leave or whether you want to stay, what are your options? Yes. As you explore with our counselors, then you are referred to our resident lawyer. Mm -hmm. And then you can also make informed choices about that mm. and uh, you can also make informed choices about your you know issues like uh, your children mm. also mm -hmm. you want to take your children do you want to leave your children or you want to go to relatives where do you want to go mm. so those are all the various options that you can choose from and whilst you are in the shelter we also have life skills branch mm -hmm. where we are empowering these women and girls who come to us who live in our shelters to be empowered. We don't want them to just sit there and mm. receive counseling. Yeah. Then what? Mm. Because as we all know that counseling doesn't end in the counseling room. Mm -hmm. Counseling, or to see the results of counseling is when the client leaves the counseling room and they are in their homes. Mm. How are they coping? Yeah. Have you given them the resources to be able to function normally mm. in their own communities? Mm. So we have embarked on a skills uh, project in all our shelters mm. and at the one-stop center where we teach these women life skills so that when they leave the shelter, it's not only the counseling that they received, but they have been also given life skills mm -hmm. to be able to function normally in their communities. Mm -hmm. Because one of the drivers of gender-based violence is poverty. Yes. And you find that a lot of women are not working mm. and uh, they've been disenfranchised in that uh, respect. So because of poverty, they cannot fend for their children. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are going to give them counseling and let them go without giving them any life skills, mm. what's going to happen to exactly. that woman? Mm. You haven't really done much. Mm -hmm. So we ensure that we give a holistic approach to the client when they come in mm -hmm. so that when they leave us, they will really be empowered both physically, both psychologically, and both mentally mm -hmm. and also they have livelihoods. Yes. Yes. Um, I want to find out there are ins instances where somebody would come um, mm -hmm. when I've just been abused. I'm angry with this husband of mine. Yes. I'm coming to you and I'm reporting. Yes, I've gone back home. Then I'm sweet talked. Uh, maybe we had already moved to the stage of taking it to the legal side. Mm -hmm. And then later on, I'm saying, no, we've, um, we've solved our problems. I'm happy. Do you meet those? Yes. We often meet women and girls who come and uh, they, they say that, you know, where I went home and uh, I've resolved with my husband. I want to withdraw my mm. case. And yet it has already been reported. Yeah. But what uh, we've discovered is that a lot of women were being sweet talked and they were withdrawing their cases. And what happens a month or a few weeks down the line, they come back to us. Exactly. They've been abused again. 
because an abuser is an abuser, exactly. they will continue with their habits of abusing this woman. Mm -hmm. So what the government of Zimbabwe has said is, is say that if somebody comes and reports gender-based violence and then they want to withdraw, mm. we are not going to withdraw it. That's good. It will continue, yes. the case will continue, and then whatever the resolution will come at court, they will not stop the court process. Mm -hmm. So I think that's good for women because of, what, of the results that I've just told mm, you, that mm. they come and with the draw, and the next time they come again, yes. they've been abused again. Mm -hmm. Yes. While well, you had there, an abuser is always an abuser. Sadly, we have had um, some women even losing their lives after being sweet togged. So, from what we are hearing, when abuse has happened, and definitely I would like to applaud the government because sometimes we need to empower the woman through acting on their behalf. Mm -hmm. um, like the poverty that she talked about, when I know this is the breadwinner, then I'm, I'm, I'm worried to then say what will happen to me tomorrow. We need to make every effort mm -hmm. to stop abuse. Join us after the break. We continue with our discussion where today we are looking at uh, the issue of uh, gender-based violence. Um, I want to find out from you, Diana, in this COVID era, yes. abuse, we are saying it has increased within the homes. Mm -hmm. How are you responding? We know there are issues of social distancing, there are mm -hmm. issues of restricted movements. Yes. So how are you responding? Thank you, Tariro. Uh, during this uh, COVID period, we've actually had more numbers of women who have called out, who have come to us to seek help uh, because of gender-based violence. And like you rightly attributed it in the first instance to uh, couples or families staying together and also exacerbated by this economic meltdown. There's not enough food. Mm. There's not enough money in the house. Mm. So something which is very small, which never used to cause uh, problems or issues before, it's now a big issue. They start quarreling. Yes. So a lot of women are coming. A lot of girls are coming with their physical violence, especially. Mm. Mm. There's a lot of physical violence which is happening. So they are phoning us. They are using the helpline. We have the toll-free line. Mm. And recently we've increased our toll-free line. We have the Econet. We have the Tel One as well. Uh, yeah, Tel One. We are in the process of also of upgrading our call center so that we can receive more calls mm -hmm. uh, to that effect. Mm -hmm. So a lot of women are coming. They are referred either by friends, either by our partners, uh, whether from hospitals and also the police. Mm -hmm. They are referring clients to us. And uh, we have community-based uh, services in the CBSs, in mm -hmm. the communities, mm -hmm. who are also referring clients to us. So we, we respond to them through that helpline. Mm -hmm. And some, what we've also discovered is that they need help yeah. with their, their medical, mm. medicals. Mm. So what we normally do, we have a medical fund, we refer them to the uh, hospitals where they receive uh, help. And the police, to that effect, they've really been very helpful because they've been affording to give them letters so that they can to ease the movement of the clients. Mm. They can be able mm. to access you know, some of these services. And the social welfare, mm. we're working together very well, our referral pathway yes. and the health system, they've also responded. Some hospitals, they've even gone to the extent of saying, if somebody's coming, they've been uh, violated or it's physical violence, they need to be treated. They treat them and from we just phone them to say that we'll be able to settle mm. the bills. Mm. They've been able to do that. So we've managed to respond to a lot of survivors mm. during this COVID period. Uh, and we also have a shuttle. In some instances, they don't have transport. Mm. We have a shuttle at Msasa that ferries clients to get the other services that they want. Mm -hmm. And we've maintained a skeleton of staff at our office at 64 Selu Avenue, corner 7th Avenue. Mm -hmm. Skeleton staff that will respond to emergencies. Because sometimes there are emergencies where a woman really cannot go back home. They are not safe in mm. their homes. Mm. They have to come to, uh, to Musasa to us or they are seeking shelter. Mm. Or the police have referred that woman to come for shelter. So the skeleton staff will respond uh, on a face-to-face -face basis to these uh, clients 
who come to us, notwithstanding that we are actually applying the COVID rules, the mm -hmm. who, uh, regulated COVID rules, so that we ensure that our clients and the staff at the office are protected from COVID-19. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. watching you at home and I'm being ad abused. What are the steps that I need to take? The steps that you are going to take, Tariro, if you are being abused, we tell all our audience to phone our toll free lines uh, that will be given at the end of the program. Are your yes. toll free lines um, always answered? Because uh, we often hear people complaining that toll free lines, they're just given, but when you phone, nobody answers. With uh, you dealing with issues of gender-based violence, are you any different? We are different, Tariro, we are different. Our toll free lines are 24 hours. They are working for 24 hours. There are counselors at the end who are ready to answer and to help all the clients who phone our toll free lines. Mm -hmm. Like we, you rightly said that some people complain that they are not being answered. Yeah. You know what happens? The toll, it will be one number mm. and then there will be so many clients mm. who yeah. are phoning in. Yeah. Maybe when somebody phones, there are people, four people at a time who are talking on, on that uh, line. And then maybe they fail to get through and they mm. think that our toll free, free lines are not being answered. Mm -hmm. No, they are 24 hours operating. Anyone, anytime can phone our toll free lines and they can get help. Mm -hmm. yes. um, I'm going to put you on the spot. There is a misconception or a perception out there yes. that um, you are there to break marriages because once a woman <laughs> comes to you, um, then you're telling them, leave your, abusing, your abusive husband, leave your abusive husband. Um, enlighten Zimbabweans to say, okay. what do you stand for? Musasa stands for happy families, empowered families, families where every woman and every girl and every man for that matter, they can operate independently, they can reach their full potential free from violence. That's what Musasa stands for. Mm -hmm. We want to see, we have a vision of seeing everybody every woman and every girl being able to develop their full potential without violence, a peaceful Zimbabwe, peaceful homes. We want to build homes. We don't encourage women who come to us to break their marriages. That's why we have the legal experts mm. on our premises to advise women on best options to protect them. And that's why we have counselors also mm. to help women to empower them so that they can be able to exploit their full potentials without uh, having their confidence stripped, their self-esteem stripped. Because you know that when your confidence and your self-esteem has been stripped, you cannot you know, participate in development, mm -hmm. Tariro. <laughs> Definitely. What yes. is your parting shot in 30 seconds? Uh, Zimbabweans, Musasa is there to protect you. Like the big tree that we are, Musasa tree, we are there to protect women and girls so that you can live your lives to your full potential and so that you can also participate in development. We don't break marriages. We want uh, marriages to prosper. And we also offer couple counseling so that we build up marriages. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tari. Yes, that's all we had for you to, uh, today. Uh, for the next uh, two, two more weeks, we are still going to continue addressing issues of uh, gender-based violence. And uh, like what you heard from Diana, what we want to see in Zimbabwe are happy and flourishing families, flourishing relationships. If you are a, an abuser, a potential abuser, a perpetrator of gender-based violence, food for thought. Until next week, it's goodbye for now.